Hi guys, welcome to the channel, welcome to the garage. I'm going to get some, um, some work done on the Series 2A today. Uh, I'm not going to say anything specific about what I'm going to do or anything like that. I'm just going to crack on and see where it leads me for today, I think. Yeah, not done any videos for a while, so um, I thought I might get back into it again after surviving Covid. Yay! Uh, yeah, so, uh, I'll just give you a walk around. Uh, let's see where we're up to. Right, as you can see, engine's in, gearbox is in, and the bulkhead is, is, is loosely, it's just sort of sat in place with the bolts through the through the bottom. The tub's sat on there so I can get on and replace these um, rear panels and do some work on it. It's had a side panel on there at some point, and it's been riveted quite extensively. So, but I want to try and get it looking as original as I can. So these rivets are all going to come out. I'm going to bond the panel in place and it's just going to have a couple of rivets where needed, not extensive amounts of rivets like that because that's just a bit overkill. Bonding stuff nowadays is good stuff. They, they build new cars with it. So um, yeah, we'll bond that together. It's, it, they reckon that it's as good as welding. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we're up. What else is there? Tanks in, axles are on. It's all stuff I've covered in other videos before. That's one of the reasons I haven't rushed to um, to do a deal, a uh, deal of videos. Um, yeah, and what I'm going to do now is probably get the manifolds on, exhaust on, a few bits and bobs like that, and we'll just see where the day takes us. Um, manifolds on here. The quality of the video should be getting better soon. I'm looking into getting um, a camera, a better camera, so I'm not using my phone all the time. Um, so the quality of the video should get a bit better. What I've done with the bolts for the manifold is, um, we'll put that on there. I've cleaned them up and I've painted them with um, heat proof paint. I'll show you what I use. I've used it on the manifold as well, the, the exhaust manifold. It's, um, I've shot blasted it and I'll find the paint out and show you what I've used. It's pretty good stuff. Very high temperature. Black. Although it comes off like a, a dark grey, almost brown. But really, really dark sort of grey. It's a really matte colour. But yeah, it looks fine when it's on there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much trying to think where I got that from. I, f I think that was just from Tool Station, to be honest. About six pound a can. But yeah, it's good for doing stuff like that. I've done the done the bolts with it because obviously they rust up um, really easily. So yeah, so what I'll do now, I'll get set up and we'll get this manifold on. Yeah, this is a pretty straightforward job. Uh, you don't get much simpler than this, really. They always keep all these bombs as well, they come in handy. Leave them ones in there. You know, if you ever want to jet wash an engine block down or something like that, it comes in handy having loads of these bombs everywhere. one. New gasket, always put a new gasket on. See if it'll stay there. No. Let's try it that way around. It's got the you've got little locating dowels. Sometimes it'll sit on them, sometimes they won't. Sometimes it just likes to be awkward for the sake of it. Just 
if, uh, if the surface on the head is good and the uh, manifold is good, you shouldn't need any sealing paste or anything anymore. It should be alright. Get in there, you son of a bitch. Oh, there we go. And uh, what I'd recommend doing is getting all your bolts in loose before um, tightening anything up. Got several different size bolts here. Right, I need some washers for them. Let me just go and get some washers. Right. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't go far wrong at this stage, I don't think. Hey, don't trust words though. Famous last words. Right, I'll get all this fastened up. Right, now we've got that on, we can uh, mount the card. This is the um, original Solex card that's been remanufactured. Uh, I'll smear just a bit of Hylomar on there. Not very town on it, just the smear on it. Uh, not only does it help seal things up better, but um, it also acts as a bit of a lubricant when you're when you're clamping the um, gaskets down, so the gaskets don't split as easy. See how that's tight over there? You don't got different size gaskets from there. Double check, yeah, no, it's the same size. It, yeah, it helps act as a bit of a lubricant to um, hopefully that gasket will slide over there. It's a bit of a tight fit. There we go. So, uh, some say do this, some don't. It's your own personal preference. My theory is it's not going to hurt anything, is it? I'll do the other side of that as well. Just to help seal in a little air leaks. Sometimes it's them little tiny air leaks that are an absolute pain in the arse. Right, both gaskets on. In carburetor. I'm um, think now, yeah, that way. Just double checking, there's nothing stuck in there or anything like, um, it's not been bunged up with anything. And then, what did it do with my nuts? I've lost my nuts. We'll get them ones out. Just like that, just like that. It starts seeing. Sorry, sometimes quite up till. So it'll look like an engine again. You have to sort of lift the carburetor up a bit to get the nut in there. What have we got? Nine sixteenths, I think. Hot washer, 960 inch, no. Stuck to my finger because I've got thing oil on my finger. That won't do no good. Try and keep it pretty even if you can. And be extra careful with that little pipe there. That's the... Um, Advance for the uh, distributor. Happy in advance. That 
that's it. Job's a good one. Right. Well, we've, well, we're on uh, with manifolds and exhaust and stuff. I may as well start fitting the exhaust. This is a, um, a stainless steel one. Uh, Double S Exhaust Limited. I didn't buy this. The guy that owns it brought it, so I've no idea what it's going to fit like. Um, you find a lot of aftermarket exhausts do tend to be a bit crap when it comes to fitting, but um, the main problem is because it goes, it goes under that cross member there and then comes over this one um, I've got that right yeah it goes under that one over that one and what you find is it knocks it'll catch it'll knock on the the mount or something like that usually but um, yeah we'll try and avoid that what I'm going to do is just smear a bit of um, exhaust paste assembly paste up under up around there it probably won't need it but I'll just put a smear on there anyway um, and then I'll come and try and thread that through. In fact, I'll show you now. See if I can get this through. Might be easier said than done one-handed. So you've got to sort of bend it, twist it. Without trying to scratch anything. Yeah, and then goes over like that. One of... One of the clamps for that end and one for the other end. And then it comes up onto there. So right, I'll smear a bit of paste on, get you on the mount. In fact, if I just do this. Right, and then I'll, just like magic, there we go. Right. It'll push 90% of this out anyway. It just helps it a little bit. Oops. As well, like what I was saying about the gasket, it's putting a bit of Hylamar on there. I've heard every time I say that, I'm bloody junk. Right, putting a bit of Hylamar on, um, on the manifold gasket. This also acts as a bit of a lubricant when you're trying to, when you're trying to fasten the exhaust up and it's twisting around a little bit. Right, I'll put that on the shelf there. Just wipe that on that tyre. These tyres aren't staying on anyway. Doing well there. Fasten this up loosely. Nylock, they're not nylocks, uh, lock washers on there as well. What I might try and find is, um, I meant to order someone, I forgot actually, is some of the um, brass nuts. Just in case it ever has to come off again. They don't corrode and they don't swell up with heat like steel ones do. So they, uh, when it comes to getting them off again, it's a lot easier. Right. One thing you'll notice probably when you. Uh, when you watch me do things, I use spans a lot when I get away with using the ratchet. Um, not because it scratches paintwork and like that, but no, don't scratch it, we're alright. Um, because I prefer the feel with spanners, I can feel a lot more if I'm stripping a thread or uh, if it's the wrong thread even, or. Uh, just not going in right. You can feel it a lot more with a spanner than what you can with a, a ratchet. The ratchet, by the time you've noticed it, it's too late. Your thread's knackered, or you're not knackered, or whatever. All right, I'm not going to tighten this up all the way because I might need to manoeuvre that end. Obviously, that end's resting on the gearbox crossmember. So. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll get. Um, I've got a fitting kit for this exhaust somewhere. I'll find that out and uh, we'll crack on a bit more. What I've decided to do now is just leave the exhaust at that for now. Um, it's resting on top of that gearbox mount there. Um, because I'll take this tub off before I finish the rest of it. I've got nobody here to help me lift it off today. So, uh, yeah, I'll, um, I need to drop the tank to fit the tub. This is a brand new tank. And uh, for whatever reason, that it needs to go that way more. more for the tub to fit. This is why we always test things before we, we um, paint them. You see the big gap there, the tub won't come any further this way. So, uh, and it's the tank that's stopping it. So I need to look into that. Uh, I think I might have to just elongate the holes a bit on the tank or something, just to get it to go that way, that, that, that way half an inch. Once I've done that, then I can line, I can do replace the rear panels on the tub. The rear, I'll show you. This um, mounting bar or angle that comes across here, for some reason it's been cut. Um, no idea why. Apart from that, it was bloody, it's in decent shape. But um, yeah, so I've ordered a new one of them, them on the way. I've got the new panels. But I don't want to fit them until I've got that. So then I can know where everything can go. Um, and I can mount everything up properly. It's all waiting. Everything's it's, it's always a waiting game with this. You always seem to be hanging around waiting for something. Um, right. Yeah, I think uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Right guys, a bit of a crap video I know, I know. Uh, this isn't the end of the video. Um, I remembered I've, I, I, when I was fitting the gearbox, did a bit of filming fitting the gearbox, so I will tag that onto the end of this video. And um, yeah, just for your viewing if you're bothered. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, it's hard to film a good video when, you, when you're bitting and bobbing here and there. I'm still waiting on a lot of parts and stuff like that. Uh, and things slows down like just in there under the bulkhead, there you go, there. There's a, there's, we found out there's a little bit that should be there, that panel. Um, so, I have been getting bits off the old bulkhead. Um, that panel, I thought it was the green. That panel sits under there. Um, there you go. That panel sits under there like so, something like that. It has the choke and the heat control on there. And this bit sits just about there for it all to fasten to. And there's a big hole in the bulkhead. Uh, we didn't realise, because I didn't stick this down so it was all in parts. Um, and I didn't realise so I went and I was trying to figure out where this panel went and I went and looked at the old bulkhead. And yeah, there's a big hole there. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a daunting thing. That well, it's not daunting. It's not a hard job in any way, shape, or form. It's just cutting and uh, welding a, a brand new bulkhead that's just been painted, and it's got to be what it's got to be. It's um, it's got to be right. So that's what it came out of the factory with. That's what it's leaving this garage with. So yeah. All being well, they'll not be too much damage there. I might even see if we can figure out another way of fastening that on without welding it. And that way then, the bulkhead itself won't need any paint really. It'll need touching up where I put the hole out and that's it. Um, yeah, might try and bond it on or something like that or, I don't know. We'll think of something anyway. Right. If it's got to be welded, then it's got to be welded and they'll, they'll have to have some more paint on the bulkhead. It's not like there isn't loads of stuff to do, you just chuck that in the boob when he's doing the tub or something, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll figure that one out. Right, yep, yeah, I'll, thanks for watching guys, I'll chuck the gearbox videos on the end of this one. Um, yeah, I survived Covid, woohoo! Uh, I thought I'd put that out. Uh, put, I'm not thinking about that. One thing to, if you ever get COVID, keep your energy up. 
one thing I um, that was doing me because I, I was the first stage when I did that video, I did that cold start video in um, in the during all kind of what I did of the globe books. Yeah. Um, after that, I was destroyed. I was totally and utterly destroyed. I felt didn't feel too bad, light, lightheaded, going quite wuzzy and stuff like that. But absolutely no energy. You'd get up, you'd go to the toilet or get a drink or something, and then you'd have to sleep for hours. Absolutely no energy. So, but you don't ever feel like eating. So, eat. If you ever get it and you're stuck in bed with no energy and you don't feel like eating, you've got to make yourself eat. You've got to eat and keep your energy up. And I don't mean when I say energy, I don't mean stuff like caffeine drinks and coffee. You know, your energy drinks and coffee and stuff like that because it's, it's false energy. It's uh, it's a stimulant. It's not a it's not an energy thing. So yeah, keep your sugar up and stuff like that. But um, plenty of tea. Uh, yeah, and and fight away through it because that's all you can do really. Once you've got it, you've got it. There's no, there's no, there's no easy way around it. You've just got to, you've just got to ride it out and see what happens. Yeah, I just one thing that I mean, I don't want to spark a big argument about um, about to get vaccinated, whether it's all the placebo or anything like that. But the way I felt, absolutely destroyed, with no energy, and and even I was, uh, even now. I've been I've been outside for over a week now. I've I've been I've been out of isolation for over a week now, and I still feel the side effects from it. I still feel exhausted all the time, low energy, aching, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm getting better every day. But uh, yeah, yeah, you've got to look after yourself. Um, I dread to think what it'd have been like if I hadn't had the vaccine. Yeah. That's, um, I mean, yeah, you're right. That might have been all I'd ever had. The vaccine could be a placebo and all that. Like, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's all, all I would have had is what I had anyway. If I hadn't have had the vaccine, I'd have just suffered exactly the same as what I did. But at the same time, you don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I could be on a ventilator. You just never know. Never going to know. What can you do? I didn't fancy taking the risk. Right, that's all I'm going to say on COVID and vaccines and stuff like that. And I'm not going to get into a big debate about it. Each their own. If you don't want to take it, don't take it. It's your prerogative. I've got no arguments with that. Um, I decided I wanted to. Right, I've rambled on again. I've just looked at the time on this from nearly six minutes of me rambling on. I'll stick the gearbox videos on. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll uh, see you all soon with some better videos than what I've done. And uh, I'll, I'll um, get back into it and we'll start, I'll start getting this project together. Right, thanks guys, see you all soon. Bye bye. Right, I'm going to have a stab in the dark here and I have a, a guess that you might be able to mm, surmise what I'm doing here. So, yeah, I'll just crack on with it. I'm not, I can't remember if I did a gearbox video before, but. Simple enough. That's, um, that does make things a hell of a lot easier, even fitting gearboxes. Not the monkey finger, the, um, the engine level. Just 
But what I'm going to do, I'm going to loosely position these mounts in um, and uh, not going to fully tighten anything. The only things that are fully tightened up is um, underneath the mounts because obviously you can't get in there. So um, yeah, I'll put these in position and uh, loosely with the bolts in and we'll see how we go. Right, um, I've put the mounts onto the actual um, gearbox itself because I figured it'd be easier to line them two holes up down there if I can move out of the way, look, down there and then trying to get that through there that bolt on the mount not making much sense here, I'm still recovering so you'll have to bear with me um, yeah, so what I'll do now, so rather than rambling on I'll, um, I'll set you up so you can see what I'm doing and I'll just drop it in Right, yeah, sure, sorry about the, uh, the shoddy video making, but uh, I'm trying to get back into things here. It's easier said than done. Um, right, so the engine's that way. Which way does that go? Right. <sighs> Let's let this down a bit, shall we? Shoved on the other side. Got John Dingle's advice, and I put a bit of wood, an inch bit of wood under there. There. What I'm going to do is get it in gear so I can just turn the shaft a bit. First motion shaft. Get the leg out. Right. Just knock this into gear. I can turn that shaft that slot in. In theory, it'll slot in anyway. You know what theory did though?
Yeah, really bloody hard work on your own. Right. I've got one nut on a couple of threads. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll use that now, that'll hold it there. Hopefully, there's no real tension on it. So now I can try and square the gearbox up with the engine and uh, Hopefully slot it in. Or has it not uh, still not quite level? Gap's too big this end, so it's not going in straight. Why is it not going in straight? What's stopping it? Could it be John Dingle's bit of wood? Well, what I managed to do was, um, so obviously I've got a bit of wood under, the, under there and it was snagging on that. So I've jacked it, the engine up, um, it's got a soft pad on the trolley jack, jacked the engine up and then it's just allowed the, the gearbox to, to move. It was snagging the bit of wood that was underneath and we moved that out of the way. Um, I know I haven't got any washers on these yet, but I'll go around and I'll do them in a minute. Um, as we tighten these up, but now it's just a case of pulling it together. Uh, looking for the spanner, it's in the pocket. I like to literally inch these in because. Uh, with a spanner rather than a ratchet or a buzz gun or anything like that because you can literally uh, feel it if it gets any, if it gets snug or anything like that. And you don't want to be forcing anything. So all being well. This will snug up nicely. Try keep it even, as even as you can. You don't want to, you don't want this side to be touching and that side to be an inch away, because that'll not be doing anything any good. I'm glad that leaves up down there then. That's, that's good. 
bit there, where it's dragged a bit of the aluminium off the casing there. We go over and swing that off. Oh yeah, it's warm still. Once I've snugged up, I'll just whip these out, put the washers on. Oh, you got the bugger. And uh, tighten it up properly. And we're on, that'll do it. So I did just jack it up a bit, wiggle it about and it just plopped on. So it's pretty square now. Right, uh, obviously you don't want to be staring at my bald spot, so I'll nip round. Uh, tighten all these bellhousing bolts up. I've got the brackets go on there for the um, for the clutch slave cylinder, which is over here. So I've got the bracket for that. And uh, yeah, I'll come back to you in a minute.